technology here, I can tell you that. This is great. Uh, let's see if this one works. Oh, it does. There we are. Um, well, this is the power. Now, I want to tell you so that you know that I know what the parable is about. <laughs> and uh, the parable... There it is. The parable expresses the open and the compelling invitation to come to Christ for salvation. Deals particularly with the Jews to whom the gospel was to be first proclaimed, because the message of the gospel is to the Jew first, but not only to the Jew, also the Gentile. And, uh, but they rejected the invitation to come for the gospel, and therefore the gospel would go to the whole world and to the Gentiles. Now, the reason I tell you that is so that you know that I really do know what the parable is about. Because we're not going to look at the whole parable. What I want to do, I want to uh, look at the two messages that are in the parable. There are two pertinent messages that, that come in the parable. First of all, the message from the master in verse 17. And then, secondly, the message from the serpent, servant in verse 22. And uh, what I'm going to do is this time, this week, we're going to look at the first. The message from the master. And uh, what is that message in verse 17? It's simply this. Come, for everything is now ready. And that's our message for this week. Uh, next time, whenever that'll be, we're going to look at the message from the servant, and his message was, what you have ordered has been done. So that's where we're going in this week and it was going to be the following week, but because I was ill, it's not. So it'll be next time. But so this week, we're going to look at the message from the Master. And it is this. Come, for everything is now ready. And this is the glorious message and presents, uh, represents two things. First of all, it presents the call to come to Christ. Come, for everything is now ready. And, uh, of course, is to come to Christ for salvation. And what we're learning here, and the important thing we've got to take on board and absolutely get in our minds and fix it firmly, is there's nothing now to do. Come for everything is ready. Come to Christ. There's nothing now to do. All needful for the sinner's salvation has been done. It's been fully and absolutely accomplished by Jesus. There's nothing else to do. The price is paid. Come, let us enter in to all that Jesus died to make our own. There's nothing now to do. We can put it this way. Jesus has done all that's needed. All that's needed to be done for the sin of salvation has already been done. Come, for everything is ready. There's nothing now to do. Come, enter in. Come. The invitation is there. It's ready. It's been done. Come and enter in. Jesus has done it all. And we find that because Jesus has died. Listen to these words. In uh, 1 John 4, verses 9. This is how God showed his love among us. 
He sent his one and only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus has died for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15.3 says, Christ died for us. He's paid the price, the full price, for our sin. You see, salvation is not Christ dying on the cross and something else. Scrub that out. Salvation has solely to do with the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And if that wasn't good enough, you might as well go home and go to the shops. But it was good enough. How do we know? Because that sacrifice has been accepted by God on high. He has raised Christ from the dead. And Romans tells us he has been raised for our justification. That is the glorious message of the resurrection. God says that sacrifice is good enough. I accept it. Now, come. There's nothing else to do. You don't have to put yourself right. You don't have to turn over new leaves. You don't have to try your best. Everything needed for your salvation and my salvation has been done. It's a perfect, finished work. Jesus has done it all. Our eternal soul salvation is not secured by anything we do. Am I believing right? Have I come right? Have I trusted right? Have I, have I, have I? Nothing to do with me! Was his sacrifice good enough? Yes! Good enough for God. He raised him from the dead and we're justified by that death. We just Enter in by faith. Thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross for me and for my sin. That God has raised you and I've just entered into all that you died on the cross for me. My salvation, my forgiveness, my eternal life. You've done it all. Praise your name. Thank you that you died for me. Now, How do you know whether he did die for you? It is only as you have that faith. And Ephesians tells us, this is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. I can't make myself believe. I can read all the books in the world. I can't make myself believe. I can be intellectually persuaded, but I don't believe. I can, can't make anyone else believe. It is God's sovereign prerogative to give as a free gift of grace saving faith. So I never ask someone, will you believe in Jesus? I always ask, do you believe in Jesus? I, Wesley said, he said, he found his heart strangely warm and he found that he did believe that Jesus died for him. Do you believe? You say, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I just know, I believe that when Jesus died on that cross, he was dying for me and for my sin. Oh, I just praise his name and I'm saved. That's saving faith. It's not, well, now I've got to start doing this, and now I've got to start doing that, and now I'm going to do that. No. When we've known a work of grace, it will automatically come. Because, you see, when we find that God's given us that faith, and we find that we do believe that Jesus died for us, which you'll never read in the Bible. You'll never find, I've never found these words. I've never read in my Bible, Jesus died for Fred Hudson. It's not there. But I know he did. How do I know he did? What presumption? Oh, no, no. I have that faith. I just know that he died for me. 
I've never deserved it. I could never earn it. There's nothing now for it that I could have done. There's nothing I can do because Jesus has done it all. All. Listen. All. Listen. All. Praise to Jesus because he has done it all when he shed his blood on the cross for this unworthy sinner who you may not believe is still unworthy still doesn't deserve it it's not that I didn't deserve it but now I do I didn't deserve it and I still don't but it's mine that brothers and sisters is grace to his praise to his glory to his honor it's nothing of me there's nothing now to do. I don't know whether you've come to Christ or not. If you haven't, what am I telling you to do? Nothing. But if you have the faintest urge in your life to find out more about Jesus and to see what he did on the cross, I can tell you it's only because God by his spirit is working in your life. He's beginning to do that work. And the first thing he'll do is he'll convict you of your sin. Suddenly, it will not matter that the Bible says everybody sinned, which it does. All have sinned and all come short of the glory of God. When God works by your spirit, that won't matter two hoops. You'll matter it. It's me that sinned. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Never mind about him or her or them. Lord, I am a sinner. Oh, Lord, save me. Oh, Jesus has died for my sin. The Bible tells us Jesus died for the sins of the world. When I come to Christ, all that matters is that Jesus has died for me and my sin. And I come to him in grateful thanks. Thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross and shed your blood for me. Oh, praise your name. I want to live for you forever. Sovereign, saving grace. All glory to Jesus. There's nothing now to do. It says, Acts 10.43 says, only believe. He got that faith. It was interesting to hear of uh, Alexander Marshall. I'd never heard of Alexander Marshall. Don't suppose you have. If you have, I apologize. I've never heard of him. He was a, a Scottish evangelist. don't know if he lived in Edinburgh or not, but uh, he was a Scottish evangelist. And he told of a man who said it had taken him 42 years to learn three things. One, that he could do nothing to save himself. Two, that God did not ask him to do anything to save himself. And three, that Christ had done it all. The work is done, he wrote. It needs no more. Christ's death has opened heaven's door. Only believe, the Savior cried. Believe, and you are justified. Or if you prefer the older hymns, remember the old hymn? Rock of Ages, Clef for Me by Augustus Top Lady. What is verse 2? Not the labours of my hands can fulfil thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Verse 3 says... Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Yes, there's nothing now to do. Come, for everything is ready. And if you're saying, well, I can't come to Christ, I, I, I'd never be able to do that. I'll never be able to pray. 
I, I, I can't afford to give. I, I, I could never give every Sunday morning. I, I, oh, I can't change. I'm, I'm too old to change. It's all been done. Come as a sinner to Jesus. And there's salvation for all who have faith in the death of Christ on the cross. Come, for everything is now ready. Even this has gone off, Rob. All right, I've got it. It's come back. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost as technical as you. <laughs> he lied. <laughs> yes, but if we have come to Christ, if nothing in our hands, saying I can't do anything, I'm just entering into all that Jesus has done for me when he died in my place on the cross, if I enter into that, come for everything is now ready, it also speaks of something else. It's the future, not only the present call to come to Christ for salvation, but the future call to go to Christ in heaven. And one day, that's going to come to every believer. That future call is going to come. Your mind, come, enter in to all that's been prepared for you. Come to the great wedding feast, the banquet of the Lamb. And, of course, when we are thinking of the present call to come to Christ for salvation, there's nothing now to do. The future call, come, for everything is now ready, to go to Christ, to be within heaven. We have to say this. There's nothing now to fear. There's nothing now to fear. And I speak to those who you may have had, like I have, a diagnosis of cancer. You may be getting on in years and feel, well, how long before I'm going to hear, come, for everything is ready. Time for you to come. There's nothing now to fear. Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you. And I will come back so that you will be with me forever. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And one day, the message will come to every individual believer. Come, for everything is now ready. We're ready for you. And there's nothing now to fear. In fact, Revelation goes further than that. Revelation 14, 13 says, happy beyond expression. That's what blessed means. Happy beyond expression are the dead who die in Christ. Happy. Philippians 1, Paul said, to me, to live here on earth is Christ and to die is gain. What shall I choose? I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far. It's not only nothing to fear. <laughs> it's better by far, says the inspired word. It's better than this. It's better than meeting Sunday by Sunday to praise the Lord. It's better by far. It's better than walking with Jesus here on earth as we're indwelt by his spirit. We shall see him face to face. It's better by far. It says this. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, We know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal home in heaven, not built by human hands. We are confident, listen, and would prefer to be away from the body and to be at home with the Lord. I would prefer to be at home 
with the Lord. It's better by far. You see, beloved, there's nothing now to fear. There's nothing to fear when it comes to your turn. And the word comes to you, come. For everything is now ready. I've gone to prepare a place for you, come. Everything is now ready. There's nothing now to fear. Paul could say in 1 Corinthians 15, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? No sting, no hurt. As they used to say in the old days, and I'm going to say in these new days, sudden death, sudden glory. I shall see him face to face. In fact, 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. Now that takes some thinking about. If only for this earthly experience, this earthly life, we have hope in Christ, you ought to be pitied. You might as well be, go out with the world. If only for this life, we're to be pitied more than all men. It's not just now. It's not just here. We're, beloved, going to see him face to face. And we shall be forever with the Lord. It has not entered the heart or mind what God has prepared for those who love him. It's going to be better by far. So, the message from the Master. Come, for everything is now ready call to come to Christ for salvation. There's nothing to do. Enter in to all that Christ has done for you. And if you are a believer, when that time comes and he says, come, it's your turn. Everything is now ready. Enter in to all the joy of the Lord. Come, for everything is now ready. And I want to just pause now and just say let's have a little prayer because I'm concerned, particularly for anyone who's been saying, oh, I could never really give my life to Christ because I could never, I could never, I, it's just not, I, I, I couldn't be like him, I couldn't be like her. Yeah, I... There's nothing for you to do. Just realize that Jesus has died for you on the cross. So I'm not going to ask you, will you believe? I'm asking you, do you find somewhere deep down that, that you can't explain it? You just do believe that Jesus died for you when he died on the cross. That is saving faith. I can't give it to you. No human being can give that to you. No book can give that to you. Only the Holy Spirit can give you that. And if you believe, just say, thank you, Lord. I can't do much. But I'm just a worthless sinner, but I just thank you. I know you died on the cross for me. Thank you. And because I know you've given me that faith and that you died for me, I'm saved. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray. Father, I want to pray for anyone here who's 
been held back by Satan saying you'd never be able to do this, you'd never be able to do that, you'd never be able to keep it up, you'd never, thank you Lord, there's nothing now to do. Thank you Lord Jesus, you did it all. You prayed the full and perfect price and you cried out that cry of victory. It's finished. There's nothing now to do. Just come and enter in by faith. And we pray, Lord, we should give that saving faith to this one and that other one. Though they're too young to understand too much about the Bible, they're too young to understand too much about theology, they're too young, but you can give them faith. Thank you, Lord, to the very young, you can give faith, and they just say, I don't know much, but I know Jesus died for me on the cross, and I'm saved forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Lord, that when the time comes and we shall hear your voice come, for everything is now ready. And it's that future call to go to be with Christ in heaven. We thank you, Lord. There's nothing now to fear. Nothing. And we praise you that Jesus has taken the sting from death. We thank you that we shall be with our Saviour forever and ever. And we'll praise him as we long to now. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's sing our last song, shall we? <coughs> Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory that you over death have won, my death included.